So with this being a common issue, how well do I think that the traditional system is set up to handle these patients and this issue? Um, so some statistics here, about 50 to 60% of patients with a mental health condition say that they've received no treatment for their mental health disorder. 25% um, say that they tried to seek care but received no treatment. Um, so clearly, somehow we're not doing a good job. Um, first of all, I would blame the traditional healthcare system. Um, I don't think that they're set up well to take care of these patients, to identify these patients or to manage these patients. But in general, I don't think they do a great job of managing patients in general. Um, but, you know, and it's, it's the typical shortcomings that are gonna affect everybody, you know, the access to care, insurance cost, uh, short visits, which are gonna affect connection with the clinician, communication, follow-ups, everything, right, the full gamut. But these are gonna take a little bit more of a toll on patients with mental health conditions because they require a little bit more. They need a little more finesse. They're probably gonna need more frequent follow-ups. They need a little better of a listening ear. And so it's just, it's gonna hurt a little bit more in, in those scenarios. Um, otherwise, you know, I think the other big problem with mental health conditions is there is a big disconnect between how we treat physical health conditions and how we treat mental health conditions. And if we kind of think about heart disease, hypertension for a second and think, well, we've got all these public health campaigns about heart disease and lifestyle factors and risk factor reduction and things we can do to prevent those things from happening. And you, know, you show up to clinic for unrelated reasons and we're checking your blood pressure and you don't even have high blood pressure. Well, why, right? Because we know that that's common. It can, you know, blood pressure issues happen to a lot of people and we can do something about it if it happens. And if we see the blood pressure rise over time, we're gonna start to talk about it. We're gonna say, hey, you can change your diet, you can exercise and we can get the blood pressure down. Or maybe eventually we're gonna have to jump on it and we're gonna have to treat it, right? Because we don't want those bad outcomes. So the same should be true with mental health, right? If somebody comes in and isn't feeling as well, and you know, even in nondescript ways, so they're just feeling low, their energy is low, they're feeling tired for no reason, their, their mood is changing, they're anxious, we should do something with that, but we're kind of not. And the delay in care for people with mental health conditions is, is by far longer than it is with physical health conditions. For anxiety disorders, it can be as long as nine to 23 years, not months, years. For mood disorders, it's six to eight years. For psychosis, so people hearing things or seeing things that aren't there or having delusional beliefs, one to two years. So, you know, clearly we're somehow not doing what we're supposed to. And again, I, you know, I, I put some blame on the traditional system. Uh, I think society, all of us take a little blame of there's still that stigma that we need to work on. Um, I think we're, get, we're starting to get there because we're talking about it now at least. Uh, but we still have a ways to go. You know, mental health is just as important as and critical as physical health is. You can't have one without the other. Um, so clearly we need to improve our approach. To see if personal unlimited primary care is for you or your company, visit our website.